Hello there! Today I'm doing a quick test. I'm comparing the Nikon D700 to the D200. I want to know how the files compare between the two cameras. So I'm not so interested in the physical aspects of the cameras in this video. I will just uh, take uh, pictures of the same subject with both cameras to see how the colors and dynamic range and noise and so on compares between the two. I chose a day with overcast weather to get even light, to not have sudden changes in light, but it started raining and there are some quite uh, threatening clouds coming up, so I better get started already and start taking some photos. And for my first uh, subject, I have chosen this uh, boat here. I have used it in some of my other videos. It has a good combination of green and blue colors. I'm using the same lens on both camera, a Sigma 17 to 50 mm DX lens, uh, and yeah, it will crop on the D700 a bit. So, but it's a fair comparison, I guess, to have it <laughs> have it the same format, and also that way I can show the photos without telling which camera they were taking with. I never used a DX lens on the D700 before, so, but it should automatically go into the DX mode. So let's see. So I'm actually a bit lucky it didn't start raining and I could do my first test without any issues. And yeah, using the DX mode on a D700 is quite interesting because it does give a frame, but still the corners are dark in the viewfinder, so yeah. I've come to a new location and I'm trying out a new lens, a 35-105mm Nikkor AF, um, not AFD actually, it's older than AFD. It's an, AF lens uh, from like late 80s, early 90s. But in any case, so this time I will not uh, crop on the D700. I will, uh, yeah, so it will be obvious <laughs> which uh, photo is from which camera. Yeah, so I want to see how it, uh, how the files look when they are not cropped. But there's really nothing here to photograph. It's like um, empty fields and stuff. So yeah, have to find a new location once again, I think. So this is a bit uh, better. Here I can get some depth into my photo. Yeah, and I will use the lens that it's uh, longest uh, focal length, 105 mm So one more test, I have come to this, uh, well, let's say a sketchy underpass, which has a lot of echo. I hope the audio will be usable from here. Well, in any case, I want to test the high ISO performance, uh, low light, high ISO. Yeah, and I have used this location before, so it should work quite well. Yeah, here it echoes much less. It's like a church or something. And the lens I'll be using is this uh, Tokina, 12 to 24 millimeter lens. Interestingly, the D700 doesn't recognize this lens as a DX lens, so it becomes like an ultra wide angle, but with some heavy vignetting on the wider setting. But yeah, let's see. I will start in this direction. I never used this lens on this camera before, so I'm quite curious how, the, how extreme the wide angle will be.
the vignetting and this appears at about 17 to 18 millimeter on the D700, which uh, interestingly corresponds to the 12 millimeter focal length, the widest on the DX format for this lens. So yeah, it's like a <laughs> dual purpose lens for both the DX and FX and a super wide angle lens that on both. Yeah, quite a useful lens. <laughs> I'm uh, quite surprised. The difference between the D700 and D200 really isn't that big. I mean, if you shoot in daylight, the colors and dynamic range are very comparable, almost the same. When the D700 is used in DX mode, I don't really see any difference between the photos. I mean, I couldn't tell which camera was which one. So yeah, I ended up not using the JPEG files at all because they became very bland on the standard settings. So, I mean, they will not be able to show what the cameras are actually capable of. For the editing, I started with the files from the D700 and I edit them how I usually edit my files, how I like them looking. And then I copy pasted the settings to the D200. And uh, well, there was one adjustment more I had to make. All of the files from the D200 were underexposed by two thirds of a stop. So I had to compensate that by increasing the exposure. And I don't know, it seems like the ISO value might be different on the D200, like it's a bit lower than the D700, which is not actually strange at all, because if you have sensors from different manufacturers, the actual ISO value might be a bit different. I don't know if this is the reason or if my camera is just broken. <laughs> I should maybe do some more tests. And yeah, when shooting the photos, I use the same exposure settings. So they should be the same in theory, but when it comes to ISO value, it's not always the same. When editing the files, uh, yeah, you can basically copy paste the settings between the cameras and they turn out the same, at least if you have the same exposure. So yeah, which is good to know because it means you can use both cameras in well, uh, the same photo shoot and you don't really need to do any color grading. So yeah, that's quite uh, good to know. If you shoot the D700 in the FX mode, as it was uh, well meant to be used, then you have the difference in perspective you get a more wide perspective on uh, the lenses that were made for full frame. So yeah, that's one advantage because you get access to much more lenses and more high quality lenses on the D700. And of course you get uh, two more megapixels on the D700 compared to the 10 on the D200. When it comes to low light and high ISO, well, there you have a big difference. Sure, there is some noise in the files from the D700, but I mean, if you compare to the D200, there the files are very aggressively noisy. So, <laughs> so that's one big difference between CMOS and CCD sensors. And uh, well, of course, also between DX and FX formats, because on full frame, you should at least in theory get less noise. Now, that being said, I still like the aggressive noise uh, for some night shooting on a D200. It can give a quite interesting night atmosphere, so to speak. I will put some of these raw files, maybe also the JPEGs, uh, up on my Patreon, which I just opened by the way. So if you want to support this channel, you can join there. And also you get access to the files. I mean, it will be a very cheap price. So I mean, I need some place to host them anyway. So might as well be a Patreon. Yeah, so if you want to support the channel, go and join there. I appreciate it very much. So at the moment, there is a quite a big hype about CCD sensors in general and the D200 in particular. But, uh, well, as I saw in my test, there is really not like a big difference. Like the CCD sensor is not vastly superior or anything. Like if anything, they are very similar. So is this uh, CCD sensor hype just a big hype that is full of air? Well, I'm afraid to say that, yeah, that kind of is the case because the difference between these two type of sensors is not like the most important thing for determining the look of the photo. I mean, both sensors have uh, an array of uh, photodiodes and use a Bayer pattern to, well, filter out the light and then decode the photos, I mean the numbers into photos. I have shot with many different uh, cameras from this era, also modern cameras, both CCD and CMOS sensor cameras, and I cannot really see any, let's say, consistent difference between the two types of sensors. I've seen bigger differences between different CCD sensors than between some CCD and CMOS, like in the D200 and D700. The thing that mostly affects the look of the photos, at least in a very similar level of sensors, like in the D700 and D200, is the processing. So, I mean, it's really up to how you edit the photos for what look you get. I mean, the data that comes of the sensors is not that different. Now, that being said, uh, still these old cameras have very different looks, uh, both in their JPEG and RAW files compared to modern cameras. 
So, I mean, there is a difference, but the difference might not be because of CCD sensor. It's, there are many different things that affects how a photo look. So, yeah, I think that's enough about that for this time. And I think this is all for this video. Maybe I'll do more tests like this in the future. Maybe it could be quite interesting to test a modern CMOS BSI camera with the D200 and see how big the difference is there. But yeah, in any case, uh, thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye!